Yeah, welcome here at uh, Seismic Radio, and um, and uh, welcome to this little talk. It's it's a little bit uh, maybe unusual, but uh, it's one of the things where uh, I got quite a little bit agitated. You know, a little bit agitated about the what the press is doing. Okay, th now there are uh, <laughs> three ways you're listening. You're either listening via Seismic Radio, you are watching via YouTube, or you're on BPN Radio. And also welcome to our BPN Radio listeners. Okay, um, this talk, um, let me just explain. I've got uh, some slides here, so apologies for <coughs> all our listeners who are not watching on YouTube, but just to explain what is on the slide as well, uh, <coughs> so that it all makes sense and that it fits in. Okay, and now the talk is about a rupture by 2021. Is this what is, what is going to happen? Is a rupture going to take place this year? And uh, I'm looking at the press um, and it, two newspapers. One of them is uh, the Daily Express. The other one is the Daily Star. And uh, I'm looking at a Bible teacher as well. And, um, and the Bible teacher, teacher who made this statement, and apparently he did make this statement. I, I didn't think he did, but he did. I'm going to talk you through it a little bit later. Uh, his name is Dr. F. Kenton B. Shaw. And um, it, it, he turned up in the press recently again. Uh, he died in 2016. Um, and um, and it's, uh, some of the stuff is actually quite poignant, what he, what he said and, and the way it, it turned out. But uh, let me just go through it. And uh, I'll look at some of the, um, the, uh, um, the statements he made and also how we should react to it as Christians. And, and the big question is, does the rupture, will the rapture take place by, 20, by 2021 um, this year? My friends, it could take place today. It could take place right today. Uh, there's no, um, in my understanding of the scriptures, there's no um, prerequisite for the rapture to take place. There are prerequisites for the Antichrist to come in. There are prerequisites for the law to come back. There are certain things which have to which have to have happened be, before this time, but as far as the rapture is concerned, it can come at any time. It can come like a thief in the night. We should watch the seasons. I think that is a clear command in the Bible. We should be prepared at any time for the Lord's return. And to be fair, uh, you don't know when your heart will beat for the last time, and when you when you will stand in front of the throne of God. You don't know. And, uh, and so it doesn't really matter whether it's a rapture or it is um, your departure here from earth. Um, as Christians, we need to be concerned about the Lord, about the Lord's business. And we need to live in an attitude of uh, perpetual repentance and perpetual um, desire to serve our Lord and to do the best what, whatever we can do. But um, a bit more than that, it's also to walk in the joy of the Lord, to have a good time with our God, to um, to live lives which are which are worthwhile and good good lives before God. Um, okay, let's go through this presentation. Uh, I've got the the the, the first slide. Um, there are the two newspapers which I'm going to look at. One of them um, came up in uh, 2018. That's the Daily Express here in the UK picking up on some of the stuff uh, this pastor has been saying. And then we've got one which came up in 2021 and is just, uh, obviously, they're both tabloid newspapers here in the UK. I think when I did some research, I saw some more newspapers picking up on this uh, and they, they run the story again. Um, um, then, obviously, there's uh, the uh, picture, uh, if you are watching on YouTube, where you see the mouse rotating now. That's the, or the cursor going around, that's the, the pastor. Um, then next to it, that's me, so you know who's talking to you. My name is Michael, Michael Trombone. Um, we have obviously a picture of the disaster and then an image of the, uh, uh, you know, what people might think what the rapture might look like. I'm, I'm not sure what it looks like. It, it'll all happen within a, a nanosecond, I think, twinkling of an eye is a couple of nanoseconds. It will happen in a very short period of time. And uh, how it how how it will unfold, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a mystery as well. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we are left behind. And I'm kind of thinking there are a lot of dead in Christ who are cremated, a lot of dead bodies who have been, how shall I say, disassembled to quite a high level. 
you know, return to dust, but God in his infinite power will raise these bodies, put them back together, and, uh, and in an instant, there will be resurrection bodies, you know, of flesh and teeth and bones and everything, imperfection, raised up, and um, we will be united with our Lord. Right, let's have a look at what's what's going on here and what uh, these guys, um, these newspapers have been saying about this man. Um, okay, this is the first one. Um, Daily Express, and you can, can you see the date on here? I think this is um, in 2018 it came out. And it says the apocalypse prediction, end of the world to begin in 2021 and Jesus returns in 2028. The, and and it says here the end of the world is set to begin in 2021 and will culminate um, in the return of Jesus Christ by 2028, according to a deceased pastor who predicted the apocalypse. Yeah. And this is a pastor. Um, again, the name is um, Dr. F. Kenton B. Shaw. Um, he is... Um, um, and, and they make a big thing out of this as well. He's the president of the World Bible Society. Uh, I, I tried, I did a little bit of digging and um, tried to find out about this pastor, you know, who he is and, you know, whether he's uh, kosher or not, uh, to use a Jewish word, whether he's okay, he's sound or he's not. And I listened to um, several, actually not several, I think it's two, two to three, um, of his sermons just to try to figure out what he's all about. And uh, fortunately, there is, is some stuff on YouTube. And and this is what, what gets me. The press is sort of launching in and uh, making a big fuss about this. Um, by the looks of it, this pastor was a pastor of, um, of a relatively small church, so it wasn't a mega church or anything. Um, it probably wasn't even that much known. The, the World Bible Society is just a group of Christians who, uh, that's the impression I got. It's not like, uh, you know, a mega organization with thousands and thousands of people. Uh, if if you check out the website, worldbiblesociety.org, you get like, a, a, first of all, a failed, um, a failed response, you know, like, oh, your browser isn't right or the site is under maintenance. Uh, then if you do a little bit of a search about the World Bible Society, you... Um, you get um, you get worldbiblesociety.blogspot.org, so it's just like a, sort of a free website, and um, and by the I mean they they are doing good stuff. They are getting Bibles out there in the world, and it just seems to be a small group of dedicated Christians who are doing, you know, a job for um, you know for the kingdom of God. Yeah, so uh, respect to them, just. A bunch of Christians doing, uh, you know, doing what God has told them to do. The press seems to make it out, or that that seems to, you know, when you read the articles. I'm going to go through those articles in a minute. Uh, like this is a, a big organization and this big, very important guy. You know, he has made this statement, and um, and I think the undertone is that uh, aren't Christians crazy? You know, aren't they? Aren't they just crazy people? And uh, uh, that's the undertone. And we're going to look at. Um, uh, at some of the statements which are um, which are which are made by uh, by those newspaper articles, the first one isn't quite as bad. The the Daily Express one, the Daily Star, again a UK newspaper, is, is a lot worse. Yeah, and and the undertones are quite 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 severe. Anyway, I listened to uh, Doctor F. Kenton B. Shaw and. I don't agree with everything he says, but, uh, you know, we are talking about eschatology. That's the teaching of the end times. And um, the, the comparison I make is it's a little bit like walking uh, on a foggy day. Yeah. So uh, you, you, you can see through the fog and you can make out what is behind the fog. For example, if there's a building or something behind the fog, uh, even from a distance you can make out and you can see the shape of the building. But as you walk through the fog, it... Um, it becomes clearer and clearer, and then eventually you walk to the other side, you can see it clearly for good. And I think this is the same with the end times, that we've got um, a lot of descriptions in the Bible of what it's going to look like, and um, and a lot of it is very foggy. Yeah, we can't really understand, and, and to be fair, when you look at some of the stuff in the book of Revelation, uh, for example, I'll give you one example with the two witnesses in Revelation that, that testify, and they are in Jerusalem, and they call fire down, 
on people who try to destroy them and they um, they shut the heavens and they cause plagues all over the world you know preaching preaching the gospel at the same time and, and witnessing for God and you can't get rid of them then eventually the Antichrist comes and he slays them and um, and people are aware of it all over the world and they send presents to one another because they're so happy that these guys are, are finished now and then they the corpses lie there for three days three and a half days in in, in Jerusalem and then God raises them up and they go up to heaven and people see this and I'm sure they they're going to be terrified now today you don't think twice about it because we have got like uh, social media uh, you can see stuff that is going on. I mean, we've just had the floods in Germany, in China. Uh, we've had fires in California and lots of disaster throughout the world. And and I, I sort of remember the floods happened during the night and in the morning I could see video images of the flood uh, almost instantaneously. Obviously, and then we've got live streaming as well where, where you get reporters just being there wherever the, the action takes place. And, and you can see it instantly, you know, with maybe a delay of a second or two seconds. And this stuff was unheard of, uh, even going back into the 70s. Yeah. In the 70s, you had to make a satellite link if you wanted to trans transfer live pictures. And there was a very limited bandwidth. They only had like a couple of satellites they could do it with. And, and it didn't work very well. Then in the 80s, you got more satellites. In the 90s, we had a lot of geostationary satellites. And you could do this uh, better. Uh, now in the um, in the new millennium, like in the in the twenties, in the new millennium, um, it's not a problem, is it? Anybody, anybody, and nobody, they can stand there with their smartphone and they can stream some stuff live to the world, and we can see stuff happening in real time um, from a nobody, you know, like not a journalist, or from anybody, you know, like just a any citizen, any person with a with a smartphone. Um, with the aid of um, YouTube and uh, BitChute and uh, Rumble and all these platforms of Facebook and others, they can they can stream stuff live instantaneously. So the world has changed very much, and some of the stuff which was a mystery, you know, 50 years ago, uh, today is is just normality. Yeah. And so that's what I mean with the fog, where some of the things which are described in the Bible they they are not quite clear, and then as we go through time. Um, they become clearer and clearer, and suddenly you can see, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It can exactly happen the way it's described in the Bible, and um, and um, and that I think is the same thing. And so with uh, with Kenton Bishaw, he, when I listened to him, he he made a couple of points, and uh, and he certainly has got a thorough understanding of the Bible. Uh, some of his interpretations are different to my interpretations and to interpretations of other people, um, you know, other you know, prophetic people who I, who I esteem very highly. But that's okay. That's perfectly okay. It's, it's the end times. We, we see a shape and we, you know, we try to interpret as we look through the fog of what the future has got, a, you know, what the future has, has got in store for us. We look at this and we, um, we sort of try to interpret you know, from what the little bits we can see, what it might look like when we get to the other side, or, or when I mean, hopefully we're not going to be around when all this happens, when the tribulation comes. But uh, when when all this stuff takes place, we we try to interpret this. And and again, he has some ideas which which I don't think are going to be um, quite where he wants them to be. He's talking a lot about Islam, the end of Islam. Um, when the tribulation period comes, I, I don't think it's going to happen that way. I think it's going to change, and it's probably probably going to be very different to what we see today. Uh, I believe that um, that um, people of various religion, uh, and, and when I talk about this, I, I, I look at uh, liberal Christianity or traditional or dead Christianity, um, Hinduism, um, Islam, yeah, animism, and so on, that, that when this great leader comes um, in the tribulation period, uh, including Judaism, yeah, and not all, but, but part of Judaism, that they will see this man as a Messiah. Uh, dead Christians will think that he is Jesus Christ returned and probably even preach this. Um, uh, Muslims will think that this is a 12th Iman if they're Shia or if they're Sunni, that this is a Mahdi. 
Hindus will think that it's one of the gods reincarnated. Buddhists will think that, you know, this is the guy who's got all the answers. Um, and, and Jews will think that, or, or some part of in, within Judaism, they will think that this is a Messiah. And Jesus even says that, you know, that there will be somebody who comes in his own name and him you will accept. And, and there, will be, there will be people within Judaism who will see in him the promised Messiah who will restore the kingdom unto them. And, um, and they probably will quote scriptures and everything to try and make it fit somehow. And I think this is, this is a thing that is going to take place. Um, uh, Bishaw seems to think that um, there's going to be a great war, the Ezekiel uh, 38 war, uh, prior to uh, the, um, you know, the, the tribulation period, and that this will be the end of Islam and there will be a great revival. Now, a great revival is taking place right now. When you look into places in Iran and you look into places like Saudi Arabia, uh, you will see that, that they are um, in the underground, that there are a lot of people coming to Christ. People are just fed up with, um, with religiousness and they want to experience God. And the only way to experience God is through, number one, being washed clean, being forgiven, and, uh, and, and entering into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ being, being the Messiah and receiving him as our Messiah, as the one who has died for our sins, as the one who has paid the price at the cross for the punishment we deserve. And... Um, and through redeeming us from our sin and from the lot of our sin. And, and that is sort of the thing. But anyway, um, coming back to, to Dr. F. Kenton Bishaw, I, I think he is, he is a good Bible teacher. Yeah? I think he, he knows what he is talking about. He does make some statements which are quite strong. And maybe that's a mistake, I don't know. And I'm going to go through them in a minute. And... Um, and maybe we should be be careful when we do this. Yeah. I do agree with um, the imminency. I think um, uh, again, when when I look at Christianity, I look at end time doctrine. We are not called to to try and find the day, the months, the year, possibly. But what we are called to do is is to um, is to interpret the seasons and know the times and be prepared. You know, look for the coming of our Lord. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is the article, and uh, I've got the dates here as well. So that article is written by Sean Martin, uh, and it was published on the 2nd of October 2018. So this is two years after um, Ken Bishaw died. Um, when you go to the, by the way, um, just to, to um, uh, make a little bit of advertising for Ken Bishaw, if you want to check him out, you can do this. It's at worldbiblesociety.org. So if you uh, go to YouTube, type in worldbiblesociety.org, you get about 30 videos, 30 talks of him, where he talks about the end times. Um, they, they look to be interesting. Um, they, most of them were done shortly before he died. Uh, so I think they must have just latched on to, yeah, let's put some stuff on YouTube and uh, keep something for posterity. When you look at the number of views on the, on the videos, they're not very high compared to some of um, you know some of the other ministries which are which are out there. So you get about like fifty to uh, to about three hundred views per video, and uh, and that's all. Yeah. So I mean, this guy is by by no means um, the um, you know the shining star of Christian eschatology. I never heard of them of him before. I um, my attention was drawn to him by. Um, an evangelist by the name of Anita Riviera, she was talking about him and uh, making the point that this is what he said, that the rapture will come by 2021. She just left it at that. But um, but when I checked it out, and, and that even newspapers were latching onto this, when I checked it out, I found that some of the newspapers were uh, reporting whatever he was saying in a very dark light. And I thought it's important to just see, what is this guy actually saying? And what are the newspapers saying? Yeah. And, and how is, um, you know, what, what lessons can we take from this? It's very, very important because we are in the end times. And Peter, um, you know, in the Bible, he's, he, he tells us, you know, people will be mocking you. And they will say, where is this coming? You know, since the, you know, since the day of our fathers, everything has just been going on as, as normal. You know, you crazy people, why are you talking about the return of Christ? This is what 
I mean, I'm, I'm paraphrasing quite heavily now, but, but this is what the world is going to say to us. Yeah. And we need to be very careful. We need to be very wise. We need to tell them it's very important. Jesus will return. That's very, very important. They need to know this, especially when uh, the tribulation time hits them and they've got like a small window of opportunity to repent. That, that they know we told them, and maybe that would be the uh, the catalyst for them to repent. But then on the other side, we should only go as far as what the Bible tells us. And the Bible doesn't give us dates. That's very, very important. And it warns us from, from date setting. Okay. So this is um, the article. I'm going to go through the article in a minute. Um, um, the, um, when you look on YouTube, there's another a pastor. I think he's from Britain, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, it's Pastor Paul Begley. Um, and and he actually talks against uh, what Bisha was saying, and he he did actually say, and I I didn't think he would because I listened to some of his talks, and he sounded very, very thorough, very biblical, but he he made a point that he said that uh, that he reckons that Jesus will uh, uh, will will come, um, you know, before the end of 2021, and that he will not preach another sermon past 2021, and obviously he was um, prophesying correctly because he did die in 2016 so he certainly wouldn't preach another sermon um, past 2021 other than you know through um, through his estate through um, through his legacy which he left behind which part of it is the the recordings and the YouTube videos okay let's have a look at the article and I've got the article out here so if you're on YouTube you can see this and read it uh, I'm just going to read through this article and I'm going to comment as I go along and it says here, and this is in the Daily Express uh, from 2018, uh, Apocalypse prediction, end of the world to begin in 2021, and Jesus returns in 2028. The end of the world is set to begin in 2021 and will culminate in the return of Jesus Christ by 2028, according to a deceased pastor who predicted the apocalypse. Okay, so that's the article. Now I'm going to do some comments. Okay, um, B. Shaw obviously goes the seven-year period, yeah, the the the, the Daniel's uh, 49th week, yeah, which he which he sort of squeezes in there and says this is what <clears throat> what will going to happen the seven years. So that, I mean that's perfectly fine, that's okay. Um, and um, the problem is it's just the the date setting, which is a little bit naughty, shall I say, or not right, maybe. Um, Uh, I've got another article as well from Christianity, Christian Post it is, and he was just suggesting it, but I, I happened to listen to one of his sermons where he actually made this statement and he was quite adamant about it. He was convinced of it, you know, that, that it would happen by that time, that's, that's for sure. And he, he didn't make a secret of it. Then the question is, did he say that Jesus will, or that the rapture will take place by 2021? Uh, no, he just said that he was convinced of it, uh, that he was pretty sure. But but anyway, okay, let's move on. And I'll tell you in a minute as well why he's coming up with that. And it's an interesting concept. Uh, I've come across this concept some time ago, and it's maybe worthwhile to just explore this as well and, and why uh, Kent Bishaw comes up with this figure. Okay, I'm going back to the article. Dr. F. Kenton Bishaw, former president of the World Bible Society who died in 2016, left behind a series of books in which he predicted the imminent return of Christ. The late theologian claims that there were signs throughout the Bible which point to the coming apocalypse. For example, he believes that uh, two world wars within a century and the birth of Israel were the beginning of the end. Uh, in his book, When? When Will the Rapture Take Place? The theologian writes, a parable of the victory is a prophecy of the rebirth of of the nation of Israel. Okay, um, that's me now talking, not reading from the article. <clears throat> I'm okay with that. Yeah, I I, I can see that um, uh, the world wars, including the um, the the current pandemic and all that, that they are just pointers towards the end time. Um, I mean, many Christians I know in the Second World where they believe that Hitler was um, that it was him, that he was the one. Uh, who um, who um, <clears throat> let me just turn the, the phone down okay so that I don't get interrupted <clears throat> that he was the Antichrist yeah and and there were a lot of pointers which which would totally justify that that um, yeah it was him and and e even within a biblical context <clears throat> but obviously his um, 
thousand year kingdom which he tried to establish only lasted 12 years quite interesting as well literally 12 years uh, so we get those numbers like 12 um, the soviet union lasted almost to the day 70 years um, east germany the socialist republic the communist republic of east germany lasted again almost to the day 40 years and it's interesting as well when you look at this and, and you look at all these numbers and figures sort of coming together and and they're all biblical numbers which have got some significance and i can see you know with um uh what bisho is saying yeah that all points to to the end and um look at matthew 24 now yeah. yeah of course there's, there's no question about it it does <clears throat> i'm going to go back to the article now so he explains the greek phrase um uh, Panta Tauta is translated, all these things refers to the beginning of birth pains, Matthew 28, uh, 24, verse 8. Jesus was saying, in effect, that when you see the birth pains, uh, World War One, World and Two, and famines and pestilence and earthquakes, you will know that his re return is drawing near. The Greek word genea is translated as generation. It literally means born one, Jesus said, uh, born one nation of Israel will be in existence when he returns. Dr. Bisha adds, seven major signs have already been fulfilled, five major signs are currently being fulfilled, 15 more major signs are yet to be fulfilled. Those who are watching the Lord's obedient servants, um, the Lord Jesus commanded us to watch for his return. He also predicts a war with Israel at the center, opposing larger nations such as Iran, Russia, while other religions will feel the God's wrath. Dr. Bishaw, when these nations come against Israel, God not only defeats these armies, but he sends fire on Russia and Iran and those that dwell securely in the Isles. I see that as a removal of the Islamic presence, so it's a great miracle that will cause many to turn to the Lord. Okay, let's look at this article. I think the article is a relatively fair representation of what uh, Bishaw was saying and what he was writing. Um, again, I haven't read his book, but I've listened to him a couple of sermons where he was uh, explaining what he thinks will happen in the end times. I don't necessarily agree with everything, but then again, we don't have to. And again, if you get 10 end time teachers, you will get 10 different versions of the end times. And that's okay. That's okay. That is just, uh, um, we've got the Bible. The Bible gives us a vision for the end times. And as I said, as the time gets closer and as the time gets nearer to the end, things will will uh, crystallize even more and we will see very clearly. Uh, and when it all happens, it'll be spot on the way it is described in the Bible. Um, and again, it's, it's written to us to be able to interpret the times and to know that the season is here, that uh, the Lord will return. Okay, be sure um, by the sounds of it, which again is is commonly, you know, the, the, the nation of Israel is seen as uh, the great return of the Jews from the ends of the world. Ezekiel talks about it. Um, a lot of the prophets talk about it. <clears throat> and um, it is a sign that, uh, you know, God is turning back to Israel. Um, we've got the thing with the fig tree, the, the, um, <clears throat> the analogy or the parable with the fig tree. And... Um, and Jesus said that this generation is not going to pass away. And, and, and again, I'm not sure how b -Short takes it. <coughs> I've seen this. I've heard this. I've heard, you know, a generation is 25 years, it's 40 years, it's, it's 70 years, it's 80 years. And maybe he thinks it's 80 years. And then uh, you've got the figures, 1948, um, 2028, that will be 80 years. <coughs> and so maybe this is how he comes up with those figures. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's another um, interpretation as well, and I, I, I tried to do this talk a few times, and something went wrong with the technology here, and uh, and I think it was maybe um, uh, the the gremlin was supernatural, <clears throat> so I, I spent a bit more time with Bishaw, and I I could see um, I could see a little bit clearer where where he was coming from, and there's one concept which is um, uh, which. I came across some some time ago, and before I move on to the next article, yeah, uh, let me just go through this concept, and and this is where where he comes up with his figures. I think um, <clears throat> there used to be the idea going around that um, that uh, the world is going to be around, the creation is going to be around for seven thousand years before eternity. So we've got creation, and from creation to the birth of Christ, we've got about four thousand years. From the birth of Christ to um, <clears throat> to um, uh, 
to the year 2000, we've got another 2000 years. So all in all, we've got about 6,000 years. And then the Bible talks about uh, the reign of Christ in the last thousand years, where there will be a kingdom of peace. Yeah? So no more war, no more turmoil in, in that extent, no more mass killing, so anything like that. Um, people will grow to a ripe old age, and um, it's going to be a completely different age, it's going to be a very pleasant time, very good, good time under the rule of Christ here on earth. And that is a millennium at the end. And you can pick this up in the book of Revelation and, you know, in the prophets, there are passages here and there which, which point to this time. Okay, so the people always thought, okay, the relevance is the year 2000. So when the year 2000 comes, you know, there will be the rapture, there will be, um, you know, the Antichrist and everything else is going to take place the year 2000. So all eyes were focused on the year 2000. Then some people latched onto it and they said, wait, 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 you know, the year 2000 is not really the year 2000 because um, chronology is slightly off. Yeah, so um, some people put the date of creation at 4004 before the birth of Christ. Um, then we weren't quite sure when Christ was born. Was Christ born um, in the year 1, 1 AD? The year, the year 0 doesn't exist, so it's uh, 1 BC, and then the next one is 1 AD. Um, was he born in the year 1 AD and, um, you know, just on that time? And, and the answer is probably not because they can tell by historical data that it was maybe 4 BC, maybe 6 BC, maybe 2 BC, 3 BC. So there are several dates <clears throat> which sort of shift about. And uh, then the next date is the crucifixion. When was the crucifixion? So we know he was 33 years old when Jesus died. Some people say 33 and a half. And um, <clears throat> so they, the crucifixion is placed from anywhere, from 27 uh, BC to uh, AD to to 30, I think to 36 AD, De depending on who you are listening to, and you, you talk to the church father, fathers, or you listen to the church fathers, and and so you, you have this indefinite time. Now, Eschatosh, <clears throat> now from a, from a biblical point of view and from a timing point of view, the birth of Christ. I mean, obviously, it's not insignificant, but it's not really um, a crucial time. But um, but the death of Christ and the resurrection, that is really the crucial time. And that should be the big celebration we have as Christians. It shouldn't be Christmas. It should be Easter. Yeah? And, and more than possibly Easter and the Passion, it should be the resurrection of Christ. That should be the biggest celebration. I find it quite interesting when you go to the, the Greek Orthodox Church, uh, when the resurrection happens, or within the Orthodox community, Russian Orthodox is the same thing. Um, there's this big joy of "He is risen," yeah, and uh, you've got this greeting, "He is risen," and the answer is, "He is risen indeed." This is what's happening when you go to um, to, to the Russian Orthodox uh, sphere. This is what they say on Easter. And the the point I'm trying to make is there's there's this this school of thought which has come up that um, that the the timing we we need to be looking at. And again, I don't want to go into year prediction, so please listen to me very carefully. I'm not predicting any year whatsoever. I'm just presenting to you an idea which has come up. And that is that um, Adam sinned when he was about 33 years old. Jesus, the second Adam, died and paid for sin when he was 30, 33 years old. The time from one point to the other point is 4,000 years. Then the time from that point to his return is going to be another 2,000 years. So that is the idea which is there. So we fill up those 6,000 years. And when you come up with this idea, and, and there, there are some um, um, some calculations and numerical stuff you can do in Genesis to uh, to to, to um, give some foundation or some some strength to this idea as well. And I, I once went through it, and it was became very mathematical. And I'm not quite sure whether people were reading too much into it, or, or maybe it really is as this numerical stuff in Genesis, which, which seems to point in the same direction. So if you take this idea, and I think this is where Bishog is coming from, uh, when I was listening to him, <clears throat> then um, you look at the death of Christ, and the death of Christ we know is between 27 and maybe realistically 30, 33. So we've got this, this gap of about six, seven years uh, where Jesus could have died chronologically, yeah, where we uh, where we are not 100% sure. And then you subtract seven years from that, a little bit before that is the rapture. Then you've got the great tribulation. Then Jesus will return at, at that point. And I think so Bishop came up with 
28, assuming that Jesus died in 27, 28. <clears throat> then he subtracted seven years from that, and this leads us to 21, but, but we don't know. It could have been 30, then we would be at 23. It could have been 31, 32, 33, so we would be at um, uh, a little bit further up the line, so 23, 24, 25, yeah, depending on um, um, where, you, where you place this demarcation mark. Now, is this the answer? Is this what we can assume is going to take place? Uh, my honest answer is I don't know. It's it's an idea. It's an idea that's been pushed about. Um, obviously, Bishaw has um, has latched onto this idea, and uh, it 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 would kind of fit in. Um, again, my my thinking is we shouldn't be looking at at trying to calculate what's what's happening. We should rather be looking at what is given to us in the Bible. And what Jesus told us to look for. Jesus didn't tell us, right, get your calculator out and uh, and then you know do a bit of chronology and work out your chronology, and then you can work out when it happens. But he said, look at the times. Yeah. For me, the biggest sign is is has the gospel been preached to all nations? That is the biggest sign, and this is what he says in Matthew twenty four. And he says, but you know, he says about wars and rumors of wars and and earthquakes and disasters and pestilences and famines. And he says, all these things have to happen, but this is not the end. They will happen, but it's not the end. But um, first of all, the, the, this gospel has been preached to all nations. Then the end will come. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and, and this is really the key. And, and I think this is one of the key indicators. A lot of the other stuff is being fulfilled. We've got false messiahs. We've got, we have had lots of earthquakes. We have had lots of wars, mega wars, worldwide wars. Yeah, like Bishop correctly says, you know, first and second world war are pretty much uh, um, a harbinger of of the end times. The the um, you know the Jews coming back to the nation of Israel, the whole idea that that God is you know turning away from the Gentiles and turning back to the Jews. Um, you know, all this stuff is, they're all pointers which all point into this direction. But ultimately, has the gospel been preached to all nations? And, um, um, and, and I always make the point we have about 200 plus nations in this world. Um, you could maybe, you know, stretch the definition of what a nation is going a little bit further if it's like its own language group and they've got some sort of autonomy. And you find this in the jungle of Brazil and in Africa that there are little groups nobody really knows about. And they just run their own affairs. Uh, they don't care whether they are Brazilians or Congolese or whatever. They just do their own thing. But um, but missionaries have been going out. They've been tracking down these groups, and they have been preaching. I heard one story, and it's quite interesting, and you can check it out. And that was there was one nation somewhere in the Pacific, and they found that there was like a little island with lots of indigenous people on them. And the UN says nobody is allowed to go anywhere near this island. We don't want them to be um in you know be affected by the west and by modern modernity just leave them to themselves and and i thought to myself this is almost satanic because we have got a clear call to preach the gospel to all nations and true enough somebody heard about this a missionary went on this island the missionary got killed in his effort to preach the gospel to them but he went there and he preached the gospel to them um, and this is how far we are there are little tiny remote communities who are being reached out right now or have already been reached out to. There was also um, some tree, to, tree dwellers, I think in Papua New Guinea or something. Again, a small group of people unreached. They live sort of in tree houses high up above the, um, above the ground and, and they hadn't been reached. They've got their own language, their own laws, their own everything. Same thing, missionaries were ready to get in there to um, learn the language, to prepare to bring the gospel to these people. It doesn't say that they have to accept it. All it says is that all nations, the gospel needs to be preached to all nations. Then the end will come. But this is what I'm talking about. Sort of the granularity where we are now is so far that we are, as Christians, identifying small people groups, tiny people groups. Yeah, it's just a handful of people who, who live sort of autonomously. And we are trying to reach out to them. This this is how far it's gone. and and. I don't know how many are left. Okay, God knows. Yeah, and maybe it's been done. Maybe the job we've been tasked to do has already been done. And and once it's been done, then the end will come. Yeah, and that is really what we should 
be looking out for, not for you know pocket calculator and going through the chronology. And to give you a warning as well, there there are I, I try to get my head around the chronology. I try to figure out when did Jesus die, which year did he die. I try to figure out when was he born, yeah. and um, <clears throat> and I tell you it's very difficult. It's really really difficult, and and to to get this chronology together. And there could be a range of dates which are which are valid, but it is not that easy. It is not that straightforward. Even with all the historical data we have, and we can track this down, it's there are a lot of assumptions uh, which are there. And so even at that point, we can't do this. When you look at Old Testament chronology, obviously the Jews have got their their dates and their chronology. Um, it's it's difficult as well. Difficult to to sort of put it all together. We know it roughly. But we don't know it's spot on. So it's not like a, a precision of an atomic clock or something. Um, and, th- and this, which I think is good as well, it it leaves a little bit of an enigma. I mean, obviously, God knows the exact dates, the exact times, but we don't. And maybe it's just time to accept this, that, that there is a, a certain amount of uncertainty and, and attempting to uh, determine the return of Christ with your, uh, with your calculator is not going to work. Attempting to work out the return of Christ by interpreting the season we are in and to just look out at what is happening in this world and compare it to what the Bible says, what the, the last days are going to look like, that is going to work. And that will give us an idea of when Jesus is coming back. So that's a, that's a point. Let's move on to the next article. And, and this is um, by um, the Daily Star. It's a UK newspaper. Doomsday preacher, chilling warning that the apocalypse will will end the world in 2021, and it's been written by uh, Kirsty Cart, and it came out on the 15th of June of 2021, and I think this is when this article was picked up, and it went through lots of newspapers, and so they had to, uh, you know, give a hard time to a deceased man, you know, who is with the Lord right now, and try and ridicule. Christianity, and this is pr- pretty much what it does. The article is completely inconsistent, and I'm just going to go through this article, and you can see what the world makes of. But we are saying, and as well at the same time, we have to be very careful in what we tell the world. But in this article, everything is sort of pretty much thrown up and down, and it's, it's a typical example of poor journalism, where journalism, in my opinion, should just present information, not evaluate information. Just presented, and, and this presentation is really, really poor. And I can guarantee that Bisho has never said anything to that extent. He has made a point about 2021. I've I've heard him say this uh, in one of the uh, the talks he did. Um, but on the other side, he made clear he 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 did make clear that it was his opinion, but that he was convinced of it. And fair enough, he didn't say Jesus will come back. He just says I'm convinced of it. That that's all. Is it right? I don't think it is. We should be very careful with dates and years and stuff like that. <clears throat> and the result is we get like journalists like that who jump onto this and then um, try to ridicule Christianity. Especially, I mean, what if the rapture doesn't happen this year? Uh, and I can probably guarantee that, um, uh, you know, in 2022, um, if we are still here and the rapture hasn't taken place yet, um, that, um, that they would pick up on this article and they would just say, oh, uh, you know, just ridicule Christianity and ridicule evangelical Christians for attempting to interpret the times, maybe a little bit too keen. Okay, a doomsday preacher, this is the article, has predicted the end of world. the world will arrive in 2021 with floods, earthquakes and plagues. President of the World Bible Society, Dr. F. Kenton Bishaw, made wa- the wild claims about the rapture's arrival almost seven years ago, but said Jesus will join to save us all by 2028. The details are to be revealed in his book simply entitled When, which was published before his death in 2016. The preacher wrote, Jesus was saying in effect that when you see the birth pains, World War I and World War II, and famines and pestilences and earthquakes, you will know that his return is drawing near. It literally means born one, Jesus said, this born one nation of Israel will be in existence when he returns. Seven major signs have already been fulfilled. Five major signs are currently being fulfilled. Fifty more major signs are yet to be fulfilled. Bishaw believes that many of the signs preceding the apocalypse have already taken place, such as the rebirth of the state of Israel and travel across earth and into space. 
both both world wars and the founding of the UN are warnings of impending apocalypse, according to Bishaw. Um, he claims the rupture will bring floods, earthquakes, plagues, asteroid hits, and volcanic eruptions, killing the entire human race. During um, the early years of the apocalypse, the Antichrist will also rise to rule the world. However, Christians will be safe as Jesus will resurrect them on his arrival, according to the World Bible Society. However, the rest of humanity, dubbed as sinners and non-believers, will be left to die in corpse-infested waters. Other doomsday mongers, including Pastor Paul Begley, believe that the coronavirus outbreak and tensions in the Middle East are also signaling the possibility of an apocalypse in the near future. Okay, <clears throat> let's go through the article. I mean, there's some really bad inconsistencies. I mean, first of all, um, in 2028, Jesus will join us to save us all. That's what she says, uh, Bishaw says. And, and I'll tell you one thing, Jesus comes to judge. He doesn't come to save. He came to save the first time around and the people who are going to be left in, in at the time, I'm not saying in 2028, but at the time when he comes back, are mostly people who have rejected Christ deliberately. And many of them will have accepted the mark of the beast, which makes them beyond redemption. Um, right, a couple of the other things, you know, perfectly fine, you know, what she says about him. Um, but, uh, but then the inconsistency is further down, you know, and, and it says here, however, the rest of humanity, adapted sinners and unbelievers will be left to die in corpse and festive waters. Um, <clears throat> uh, what else does she say here? Uh, he claims, but also, okay. He claims the rupture will bring floods, earthquakes, plagues, asteroid hits, and volcanic eruptions, killing the entire human race. So if the entire human race is killed, whom is Jesus going to save when he comes back? So even in the text, it's like a massive inconsistency. And I'm sure Bishaw is clever enough to, to not make such inconsistencies. Also, the rapture is not going to bring floods, earthquakes, plagues, asteroid hits, and so on. It's a tribulation period. So again, she, she you know, takes terms which he, I'm sure Bishaw has mentioned, and, um, and she just puts them all together, and she hasn't got a, probably hasn't got a clue what she's talking about, what she's writing about. Um, and... Um, <clears throat> So again, when you look at this text, it's just like a, a ridiculing, sort of an undertone of ridicule towards Christianity and towards uh, what Bishaw has said. If you, again, if you listen to him, you will see that it is, the guy's fairly, fairly close and fairly, fairly tight to the Bible and what the Bible says. And he's, a, I think he's a good Bible teacher. Um, but again, with, with eschatology, you have to be careful. Um, you have to take everything <clears throat> with a pinch of salt, and uh, and it's like the, the analogy with the fork. We we see little bits, and we try to interpret and put the picture together with um, with our personal interpretation. And sometimes it is right, and sometimes it isn't. Okay, um, in two thousand and twelve, uh, the Christian Post talks about um, Bishaw, Kenton Bishaw, and. Uh, uh, let me see, I got the wrong one here. And <clears throat> just the first paragraph here. And it says the World Society President B Dr. B.F. Kenton Bishaw has said that based on a lifetime of study, he believes that the rapture is likely to occur before the year 2021, while the second coming of Jesus Christ will happen between 2018 and 2028. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure where they come with 2018. Maybe uh, the rapture could be before. Um when I was listening to, to Kenton, he seems to believe that um, the crucifixion was somewhere in 27, 28, maybe, yeah, 27, 28, I think this is what he said. And so he would uh, obviously do the um, the year before, and then he reckons, and, and this is what he said, that when the rapture takes place, that uh, the, the seven-year period may not start straight away, but that, that there might be some time in between it. In between the rapture and the the treaty with uh, the Antichrist and and the nation of Israel, and um, <clears throat> and so he is you know fiddling those twiddling those dates around there. Okay, what can we take from this, and what is the danger? Uh, number one, it says always a danger in date setting, and we had this with Harold Camping from. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I, I need to figure out Harold Camping. 
I'm not sure whether you know about Harold Camping. He was um, a Bible teacher. He was on radio. I used to listen to him in the in the 80s. And uh, in my opinion, he was actually quite a good Bible teacher. Um, he knew the Bible very well. Uh, there's no question about this. And, um, you know, credit where credit is due. But uh, he had one thing which was a bit of a problem. And he, he always thought he needed to compute um, the return of Christ. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what his ministry was called. I've forgotten it. I should do this before I do these talks. But... I've forgotten this. I'm just looking looking it up. So anyway, <clears throat> he predicted the... Um, mm, I've got it here, Har Harold Camping. He started in 1958. He served as the president of Family Radio. That's it. I've forgotten this. Family Radio, California-based radio station group. Um, and um, when did he die? He died in 2013. Prior to his date, he had um, several predictions of the end of the world and obviously, or, you know, the rapture, the church going home. Shortly before his death, he, um, you know, all the media, they come to outside his home, obviously expecting that it, nothing is going to happen and to have a good story to ridicule the man. And I think uh, it really got to him. He got a stroke. He was quite old at the time and shortly afterwards he did die. Again, solid Bible teacher. He knew the Bible inside out. He was well versed in scriptures, but he had this this flaw. Uh, and you think, Harold, why, why, why can't you just leave this alone? And if you believe that this is the time when he comes, just just keep it to yourself. But and tell people be ready. And this is really what we need to do. What the Bible says, we need to um, let people know is, is look at the times, interpret the times, and know that uh, the coming of the Lord is near. And we should stop at that point. Is Bisha right? And, and the thing is, when I look at um, what is going on right now, what is going on in the world, the whole corona madness, um, um, you know, all the, the morality, moral um, values being turned upside down, um, <clears throat> the confusion which is in the world, um, politics and corruption to such a degree as we haven't seen it for a long time, um, blatant dem demoralization of society, you know, through Hollywood and, and all the rest of it. I, I think, yeah, Jesus is coming back very soon. Uh, the rapture is going to take place very soon. Big signs as well, as a gospel being preached to our nations. And I think if it hasn't already been done so, we are, we are just uh, minutes away from it, days away from it, months away from it. It's, it's it's happening right now. Yeah, the the last tiny groups of people are being reached out with the gospel. It's happening. It's happening right now. Um, did he really say? I mean, the thing is, when I first prepared the talk, I didn't think he did say this. I think he was just probably suggesting times, but he actually did say that he is convinced that he will not preach a sermon after 2021. And and to be fair, he was right. He died in. 2016 and um, um, self-fulfilling prophecy kind of but uh, but he, he made the statement about 2021 that he thinks it's all done and I think he's based on the the crucifixion plus 2,000 years that's when Jesus is going to come back but but then again when was the crucifixion and if you look at different suggestions of different dates uh, from uh, modern scholars as well as the church fathers in the in the second and third century uh, we don't know. We don't know exactly the date. I think this is pretty much what we need to say. But is the time near? The time is near. There's no question about it. I think the other thing Bishaw may have done, and I'm not sure that he looked at a generation will not pass away, and this generation being 80 years, uh, according to the, the, the scriptures, that, uh, that he was maybe using this timeline, you know, 48, 28, yeah. But but I don't know. Yeah. But um, I I've heard him say this, and he was quite adamant about this. Uh, and it, he might be right because twenty one is not over, at least for the rapture. And um, and he might not be right. I don't know. I don't know. It might still you know linger on till twenty two, twenty three, even more. I don't know. And again, it's not our job to to say that. Um. The Ezekiel 38 prophecy, there's going to be this war. Um, I was looking at this war as well, and, and a lot of Bible scholars are talking about this. The Confederation of Russia, Turkey, 
and Iran, Libya is in there, Somalia is in there, Ethiopia possibly. Um, a big war against Israel. Um, is it going to happen before, during uh, the tribulation period or before even before the rapture? Bishaw thinks it has to happen before the rapture, this war, then the rapture comes. And then, you know, the whole Antichrist, Antichrist thing starts kicking off. Um, again, I don't know. I, I had a look at this, and I've never really gone that far into it, but I had a look at this. I tried to get my head around it. And uh, I looked around what other people are saying, and some people are saying, yes, you know, that's um, before. I mean, I, again, I believe the rapture is not linked to anything. It can take place at any time. It can take place before this war. It can take place after this war. I don't know. But also, when I look at some theologians, some seem to think that this war falls within the tribulation period or um, just prior. I don't know. Yeah. But, but it's certainly interesting when you look at Ezekiel 38 and you look at the following chapters of what is written in there. And it, it really points to the end times as well. How close are we? And my answer would be we are very, very, very close. The rapture could take place before, you, before this talk is finished before it's uploaded, before you hear it, before the end of the talk, when you hear it. Um, <clears throat> what what should we take from this? And we should be taking from this that we should be prepared at all times. You know, be busy about the Lord's work at all times. Occupy till he comes. Yeah. <clears throat> Important. And occupy till he comes doesn't mean, um, you know, wash your car or whatever, but but occupy and be be, be concerned about the Lord's thing. You know, sanctify yourself, be holy, you know, follow in the, you know, pick up your cross and follow him. Th this is really the message which which I have for you in this time, for myself as well, because I, I'm failing in this area on a daily basis, and I'm open about this. I, I need the grace of God to to keep me on track and to keep me pushing through and moving on and pushing in and seeking the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. It's It's hard. It's not easy. But I, I think that's partly the cross, you know, keeping the flesh subdued and living through the Spirit, through the Spirit of God in our lives. Um, should we take our calculator out and start calculating and figure out, you know, this 2,000-year thing, when was he crucified, last seven years, and and do the, the arithmetic? Um, no, in the Bible are we, are we told to do the arithmetic of uh, determining the Lord's return. But we are told to look at the the times to look at the seasons to interpret the seasons i'm convinced that the holy spirit will uh you know before the rapture comes that um, that you will have this uh this itch knowing he is here he is about to come the trumpet is about to be blown heaven is about to get ready to receive the saints from from the globe from one end of the globe to the other heaven is ready to to receive us and i'm convinced if you are in tune with the lord and if your relationship with god is right that you will that you know the rapture is not going to take you by surprise uh, go to matthew 24 and read you know the last the last paragraph and it talks about you know that this this day should not take us by surprise that it, that the lord will not come as a thief in the night for us there are the the bad servants the lazy servants the one who beat the others and and so on who aren't their heart is not with god they will miss it they are the traditional christians they are the christians who um the lukewarm ones, you know, they are the ones who who don't really want to know. And they are the ones who, who don't, you know, they are just all about this life here on earth. They're deeply rooted here on earth. And and for them, it's going to be a problem. It's going to take him like a thief in the night. I'm not sure what's going to happen to them. I would think that if you are in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter whether you are um, the saint of all saints, Mr. and Mrs. Holiness yourself, or you are uh, really struggling, or you are lukewarm, or a lousy Christian who who is not very good. I believe that all Christians who are born again will be taken up, that you will not be taken left behind. But I also believe that within the church there are a lot of people who have never broken through, who have never given their life to Jesus Christ, who are just sort of on the sidelines, you know, checking out what's going on and... Um, and, and so on and I think they will be in trouble but I think all the others will be taken but proof is in the pudding we will see you know when it happens um, who's going to be at the wedding supper of the lamb and who isn't 
but um, but my call to you would be is is just make sure you're right with God, and um, and if you're struggling, you know, just just give your struggles over to the Lord, and He will He will set you free, and He will lead you into onto the right path. He will get you back on track, and uh, and we need to remind ourselves of this at all times. Okay, God bless and bye bye. Uh, thank you for listening. Hope this uh, talk was okay. Don't spend too much time listening to the press. Don't be surprised if the press is uh, ridiculing us. But um, we need to get the message out and we need to, to be busy about the Lord's work. God bless and bye-bye from Michael here at Seismic Radio, BPN Radio.